Welcome to this look at a load of cool new mods on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's Wednesday, it's the 28th of September. We have got a ton of new mods, I'm not going to lie. The mods and maps at the moment are kicking my butt. Uh, we've got another two maps released today. Uh, Riverside 22 by Missy B. Star South by Togrim and Zul Narash. I don't know when I'm going to get onto those. Um, the mods we've got for today, one of them is... I'm, I'm baffled by some wizardry. I've tried all sorts of stuff, but we'll see when we get to it. Updates for today, though. The map, Griffin, Indiana, 22 by AJ Farmer has had an update. Um, that has got a ton of stuff that has been changed in the update. It does say it is a save safe update, so you don't need a new save game. However, the bottom section does say... Uh, there's a load of fixes for foliage, um, stuff on the baseball field, uh, train car changes. I think he's reduced the amount of train cars um, or, put, or put them in different orders to make it easier for loading and unloading. Bailing contracts to Mount Vernon um, via train should not be generated anymore and do not accept any bail contracts, including cotton, to Mount Vernon via train. But some of those say they will only take effect if you have a new save game. So there's, uh, there's so much to read on there. So much has changed. Um, then we've got the map, uh, Mazalvietska Nijina version 3 by Krasek has had an update that doesn't say whether it needs a new, new save game or not. The Marshall QM14 by John Deere2450 and Matt XJS. The Brush Cutter by ADUB Modding Mantrid ABP team. The ACS Weight Pack by KRKZ Modding. The IBC and Pallet Stack by ADUB Modding ABP team. The Maple Syrup Production by GTX. Uh, what changed on that? I think it's just some corrections and changes to XML files. The animated shed pack by Alien Jim that has had uh, the increased silo storage to 5 million litres. Is that 5 million or 50 million? No, that's 5 million. Um, and you can sell vehicles at the farm workshop now. And also it's reduced the price for seeds and fertilisers as well at the buy points. Uh, the multi-production factory by LSMT modding team and the wholesale by Zoddlezot. That's nuts, and I think most of that is PC-related, because looking at changelog, the second one, and then this one, the third one, the amount of stuff it says it takes now is tons of stuff we don't have on console. If we don't have it yet, I don't know if it's coming, but things like chipboard, mint, chives, basil, basil um, manure pellets, oats dried, um, pumpkin pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seed oil, beef, pork, sheep meat, there's this whole ton of stuff that I don't think we've got and I don't know if we will be getting but that's part of the update so those are the updates for today. In front of me we've got the wind generators made with barrels. Um, these, this is by Nikki. 8.09 megabytes to download. We've got the tiny one. I love the, the, the detail on these, the animations, the rotation, the pulleys, the little generator. It's generating power and going to the battery storage. It's fantastic. The sound. This one will generate 360 per calendar month. We've got the small one. These Each one of these is four slots. This is the small one. Again, pulley spinning, doing its thing. <laughs> that one will generate 600 per calendar month. And then the standard wind generator, double pulley system, very clever. Down to the bottom and into the batteries, that will generate uh, 840 per calendar month. You find these under build mode, production, and generators. 2,500 for the tiny wind generator, 5,000 for the small wind generator, and 8,000 for the standard wind generator. I think I'm going to put one of the two of those on Griffin. I just love them. I love the look of them, the way they're moving, the sound, the animation. Brilliant. Wind generators made with barrels by Nikki. Next, we've got straw processing. This is a little bit different as well. Um, and it's um, processed the straw not into manure or anything like that, but into actual goods. We can get straw accessories like hats and things like that, and also uh, straw crates, boxes that can be generated. This is 8.82 megabytes download, 35 slots on console for the building, then three slots on console for the cell point that comes with it. Uh, this will hold 20,000 litres of water and 500,000 litres of straw. Putting in is done around the back, so what you need to put in is done there. 
water is put in around the side. The pallets spawn here. Now, we have got a pallet in there, but that's too heavy for me to lift at the moment. But we do have the ability up here to disable the pallet spawn. So if you don't want your pallets to spawn, you want to store them, but you don't want any pallets out here, you click on that and it puts little barriers there and stops pallet spawning. You take that away, the pallets will spawn, you can take them out. You can set them to distribute, sell, whatever you want to do. So your manage icon is round the side here. It is all processing. Straw accessories, the hats and things, 24,000 cycles per month, and the straw crates is 48,000 cycles per month. Um, as far as prices go, the fact that you're getting twice as many straw crates as you are getting straw accessories, the prices aren't that much different. Um, I've got them both running at the moment anyway. You'll find this under build mode, under production. On the end there, 70 grand is all it will cost. And if we go to sell points, out on the end we've got the straw processing sell point, which is only 500. As far as prices go, if we go into the menu here... Down the bottom there, straw accessories pallets are selling for about 2.6, 2.5, everything and the point of sale for productions, uh, for products. And then the straw crates, 2.1, 2.2, So a little bit more for the straw accessories, but not that much more considering you're getting double the amount of straw crates for straw accessories. But there you go. So that's straw processing. Something a bit different, isn't it? Uh, next, we've got the Brazilian Cow Corral. Be careful when you place this because it doesn't show you when you come to place it, but it comes right the way out. The nav mesh for the cows and where they wander comes all the way out. When you first go to place it, the building is all you see, so just be aware of that. Um, this will hold 59 cows. It's 4.99 megabytes download, 8 slots and 82 grand. It is, uh, it's by name Mog Mod. It is um, a pasture, so you won't get... Um, manure and you won't get slurry your milk point is in here for collection your dialogue box is just there water trough to the side there and feed trough is over this side you'll find it under build mode under animals under the cows there so like i say when you first get it it looks like that so you're not quite sure but looking at the actual um footprint of it it takes up quite a bit of room, so just be cautious about where you place it. That's not so you can't place things within the boundaries if you want to, but obviously your cows are going to wander out and about around there. The Brazilian Cow Corral by Namog Mod. Next, we've got the Silage Shed Pack. This is by Lancy Boy. 16.26 megabytes download. We've got the closed one i think was 20 slots the open one was 19 could be the other way around but it's 19 or 20 slots and then we've got um the vehicle shed which is six slots um that one doesn't have lighting underneath it nicely made nicely detailed as we've come to expect with lancy boys mods uh we do have lighting just inside here so we can turn off the shed lights now that's got 300,000 liters in it at the moment so capacity wise i'm thinking 1.5 million litres maybe I'm just thinking if you triple that could bring out towards the front then all this side here to fill up so maybe a 1.5 millilitre but what's nice about these as well we've got quite a bit of room up top so when it comes to compacting you've got room to get vehicles up up on top of the pile once it's full there's a little bit of clipping around the back I'm not going to lie just around there not horrendous just a little bit and then we've got the drive-through version, which I'm assuming will hold maybe a little bit less because you'll have an angled front and back on it. But it could be exactly the same laws. It doesn't say actually what it is. So under build mode, under silos is where you'll find these two. Uh, yeah, so it was 20 and 19. So the closed one, 65 grand. The open one, 55 grand. And then if we go to sheds, just there is where you've got the small vehicle barn. That's 30 grand. So, there we go. That's the Silage Shed Pack by Lancy Boy. Next, behind me, we've got the American Farmhouse. This is by Silabuki. It is 21.21 megabytes download, 43 slots on console, 150,000 to buy. You'll find it under build mode. You'll find it under farmhouses. Nicely made, nicely detailed. We do have a garage around the side. Nice animation, nice sound effects. We do have lighting in here. Uh, it's over here, isn't it? Turn off light. 
and we go inside as so we go up onto here we can open the door we can go in there is lighting in here as well I think the lighting is by the side there we go turn off the light just have to sort of turn sideways onto it we've got our sleep trigger just there we've got our wardrobe trigger just there none of these doors open but we can come inside here which is nice so under build mode and farmhouses the american farmhouse by Celebuki. again takes a, a fair bit of a footprint not horrendous but pretty cool nonetheless uh next we've got the Oberleitner. I keep thinking Oberleutnant. Every time I hear that, it's a 59.17 megabytes download. It's 72 slots, and this has got a whole load of things going on. Now, some of it, I'm not going to lie, doesn't quite make sense. Um, this is by Farmer 5 Tom. It's, like I say, 72 slots. You get the building. This is under farmhouses as well. I'll show you it. And we'll, we'll read through the description. But it also comes with a bench next to it. Now, the bench is the sleep trigger. So that's your sleep trigger. So you can put that wherever you want. It doesn't have to be there. That comes separate. Um, this is a storage silo, 800,000 litre capacity. It's a cow pen. And you can put 20 cows in here. Uh, what else does it do? Oh, a workshop trigger. There's a workshop trigger as well. Is that right? Yeah. Um, just looking down at my notes. And now it did say about chickens, but then when you read through the description, it says the chicken, the chicken pen section is just decorative. I'm pretty sure in the previous version, this FS19, there was a bit where you could place a chicken pen and it would it would stick out. I've had a look and there's not one under chicken pens. So if we go into build mode and we go to farmhouses. You'll find it. Uh, where is it? Just there. 229,000. It does say that this building contains four different types. A cow stable, a chicken pen, a workshop and grain storage. But then when you read through the description on the mod hub, it does say at the bottom, chicken coop only available as decoration. So I, I couldn't find a trigger for putting chickens in or anything like that. And then next to it, we've got the actual, it says bank. That's the um, sleep trigger, the bench that goes next to it. So these doors open. That's the milk section. Now, it's not showing a trigger, and I'm assuming we can get the milk out from the side there. There's a few bits to this that are a bit odd, to say the least. Um, install your grain device when you come to there. Nice animation. Takes it out, puts the pipe in. And when you come up to here, it will allow you then to dump in, and it will put into the 800,000 litre silo. It's not a multi-fruit silo, it's a standard crop type silo. Uh, it does say about AI helpers. Um, the AI helper can only load the silo. For loading in the building, decide against it. It says, so the helper does not get stuck, re I recommend dismantling the blower so the helper does not get stuck on it. So if you're going to do it yourself, you can bring it to here and you'll get the trigger icon come up. But if you're going to use an AI worker to do it, to tip into here, you're better off getting to here and uninstalling it. Like so. Now, I'm going to put it back because we're going to need it in just a moment. Uh, door does open there as well. Now this one, we have got gates below. Open gate below that side. Open gate below that side. To open the upper gates, you need to come to the side a little bit. There we go, and it will open the upper gates. So the triggers for those are just over to the side a little bit. So, this is where the cows look like they are, but weirdly, the feed trigger trough is sticking right out here. The feed I put in here, no problem at all. Um, straw bedding I put in the other, the outside the other end. We'll go around and have a look. Because this was a bit peculiar as well. So bedding I put in here. The trigger came up, no problem at all. So straw bedding wing then. Now it does say about water. Um, it says water goes at the back. Water at the back of the barn. I could not find the trigger. I drove along the side. I drove, I backed onto it. I drove along the side here. Weirdly, if you come into here... It looks like the water point is here, with these couple of little troughs here. But I drove all along that wall, and you can't actually get a vehicle or anything in here. So, so I, I couldn't, I couldn't for life me work it out. Um, so it's another one of those ones. You get to a point where you go round and round and round to try and look for something. At some point, you've got to decide. I need to cut off. I've got to say, I, I, I can't find it. Um, that's not to say there isn't one. I just, I just couldn't find it. Same with the gates here. Uh, lower ones done down there, upper ones just over to the side for opening and closing. 
Um, the dialogue box is just here by the log pile for your 20 cows. And when you get your 20 cows, they appear here. And they wander freely around, <laughs> just wherever they feel like it. Just wherever they like, um, which is interesting. If we come into here, we do have a light switch on and off in here. What I do like with this as well, though, we've got the stairs can be moved up out of the way. Here is your workshop trigger. And we can open the gates that side, that side, and the same with the back as well, that side and that side. Taking out of the silo is done under here. So you bring it under and that's where your stuff will come out, which is great. Um, that could be actually, that could be the milk point maybe. It's very peculiar. So we'll drop that down and we'll go up here. So with that extended like that, you can, and this is just for the look of it, um, to make it more realistic for kind of switching to one part of the silo to the next. When we come to here, it does give us an option. Please give me the option. There you go. Oh, that's for the trap door. That's for putting bales and stuff down, I guess. Uh, if we come into here, switch back your grain container. It does that. So it gives you the impression that you're switching from that grain container to that grain container. You don't have to do it. It's, it's just an immersion thing. So that's for that. Come down there. Go that way. Uh, and then we come out to here is where we've got the chicken bits. Now I'm sure, yeah, like I say, I'm sure there was a thing that you should connect. I'm going to show you though. We're going to animals, chickens, and there's nothing there under chickens for it. Um, for putting one on there. It used to be a little thing to come out. Anyway, you can open that. You can go into here and you can open this door as well. There's a light switch as well. But it does say it's just for decoration. Close that door as well. So yeah, it's an interesting one. Quite a lot going on with it. But that's the Oberleitner by Farmer 5 Tom. Next. We've got this. This is the Lizard Windrower by Pushcap. 3.67 megabytes download. Four slots on console and three meters wide. Fairly straightforward, this one. It's nice. <laughs> it's nice when that happens. Uh, if we go to our windrowers, out there on the end. 1,800. Only requires 25 horsepower. Main color changes the framework. Design color changes the discs. Rakes, discs. Those are your options. You don't have to turn it on or anything, you just drop it down. Now obviously if you've got a field and it's all the grass is already out flat, you're going to windrow it up, but I'm just moving a windrow because it's just, that's what I had already set up. Nice animation with the dust flying up in the air as well. With my hay fever, I would be in bits. There you go. Nice and straightforward. That's the windrower by Pushcap. Uh, next, we have these, and I like these a lot. This is the Lizard Quadra Pack by Nico Pixies. 7.48 megabytes download, two slots each on console, and there's a whole load of them in all different sizes. You'll find them under Telehandler Tools, but you can have it Telehandler or Wheel Loader attachable. We start with some twos designed for two bales. There is a three for three bales, and then there are fours for four bales. I have to say, they grip really well and they hold really well sometimes bale grabs like this don't always um, i used these in fs19 not this particular pack but the ones that came with the straw harvest one i think it was um, and they were awesome so if we go to bale loaders no it's not bale loaders it's under telehandler tools i just said that didn't i pay attention Miss cp uh, so we've got the quadra 2b 2700, 2780 the quadra 2bt 2650 the quadra 3b so two bales three bales 3750 the quadra 4b and the quadra 4bt the difference between the uh, b and the t the b the grabs go that way and the t they go that way so depending on which direction your bales are or how you've got them or how you particularly want to use it um, each one of these has the option to your hand or wheel loader attacher and then we can change the main colours, anything on that palette and the design colour, again, anything on that palette and that's the same with all of them, all the way up to the 4, 4B and the 4BT so, 
what I'm going to show you is the options for it, which is pretty cool as well. So if I raise that, it's a little bit easier with the wheel loader because the telehandler's got more controls on the uh, controller. But we've got control group. So if I switch it now, control group all. If I now switch to that one and go side to side, that does your grab. So control group all will give the option to do all of the grab at the same time. If I press it again, it goes to back. So I can just do the back ones. Press it again and I can do the front ones. So for picking up and putting down individual bales, if you've got stacks of bales, you only want one bale and you don't want to pick up loads or, you know, you can do it any way you want, which I think is absolutely brilliant. So that's for that one. But then if we go for the one that's got four, so at the moment it's on all. Just make sure I do that. So, that and that does all of them. Press it again. We've got right, does that one. See that one that's just going the same. Press it again. We've got right two, which does that one. Like that. Press it again. We've got left, does that one. Press it again. We'll do that one. So you can do them all individually, however you want. I'll go back again to all. Now, unfortunately, my bales are at a funny angle. Um, because I just knocked over a stack and did it like that. But I will show you what I mean about the uh, efficiency of the grab. So we'll grab them in. Pick it up. Great thing with the uh, tally handle as well. Oh no! <laughs> what was I doing? What was I thinking? Let's try that again, shall we? Right, pick that up. We can tip that right the way forward, as you can see. Right like that, they're not moving, they're not falling off. I drove out with this stack of four, right the way from the shop, the vehicle store. Didn't have any movement whatsoever. I love these, I think they're absolutely brilliant. They work really, really well. So if I now switch to, let's go right, I can just drop one off if I want. I don't have to do all of them. Switch it again. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The functionality is amazing. There you go. So there we go. Fantastic bit of kit, that. That's the Lizard Quadra Pack by Nico Pixies. Next, we've got this, the Feltrina. This is the Feltrina MR4A by SMI modding team, 15.78 megabytes download, nine slots on console. It's quite a large trailer in this capacity, it's 60,000 litres. It's a bit of a monster. Uh, you will find it under trailers. There we are, 55 grand. Slot count will come down from nine to one. Options on this, a capacity of 47,500 litres or 60,000 litres, which has another 15 grand on, but it's not bad for 60,000 litres, really. I don't think it's got a rear, tra rear trail hitch. Nope. Uh, wheel brand, we have got Michelin with a standard and an XS. Then Trelleborg, just that one. BKT, just that one. Freudestein, that one. And then we're back to Michelin again. Design, we've got standard or double lights. That's on the back. Actually, we'll go around to there. So we've got standard or double lights on the back. Then we've got Italian style, which gives you the Italian flag on there. You can have that with double lights or back off again. So depends which option you want to go for. Double lights on its own. Italian, Italian with double lights. Cool. Cover yes or no. Uh, main colour changes the framework, the ribbing around the side. Design colour, I think that's the cover, I want to say. Yep. Uh, rim colour. You've guessed it, does the rims, and then you've got a license plate option on there too. So, those are your choices. Start it up. The cover option, um, open cover, is a really nice animation on this one as well. Swing it round like so. Open cover. Nice smooth animation. Now, that will do it automatically if you decide to um, unload because it needs to open the cover to unload. We do have the option of tip side back or tip side grain door. 
Why can't this action be performed here? Oh, no, okay, okay, that was weird. There you go. So when it opens, it will automatically do the cover. Most trailers do that, they have covers, they will automatically open, but... Nice smooth animation. We do have indicators in the back as well. That's a pretty cool trailer, that. It's massive. Swivel axle on the front, as you can see. Triple axle on the back. Very cool. That's the Feltrina MR4A by SMI modding team. Next, we've got this, and it's awesome. This is the Honeybee Airflex series by Custom Modding. Buckle in, 193.06 megabytes to download this pack. Um, there's a whole load of them. This one, the largest one, is 18.3 meters, 60 feet. We can have the Crary Air Bar on it as well. Now, as far as I'm aware, I know this happened last time we had the Crary Air Bar on FS19. People saying, will that increase yield and stuff like that? I, I don't, there's not a way. The yield is governed by what you do to the field. Yes, in the real world, the, the blowers and stuff make sure that nothing gets dropped off the bottom, keeps it all on the, th I, I don't think it does. I think in the real world it does. But I'm, I'm saying that, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Um, I haven't noticed any difference, but maybe that will be a test that needs to be done separately. Um, it is the future. It says next generation of Draper headers. Um, they are light, they're fast, and they're built to last. So, as you can see, there's a whole lot going on here. So we've got a Draper belt. Plus an auger as well. Now the auger can be added on if you're getting stuff bunching up at the top and the draper belt's not clearing it, the auger can move that stuff as well. Uh, the air bar can be on or off. You don't have to have the air bar on there. Depending on the size of the header, you can have a single flow system or a double flow system. The larger the header goes, you have to have a double flow system because a single air won't work. So you've got the air blower unit and it will run both ways around the system. Um, we can raise and lower the header. There's a header height control to a degree. Now the wizardry on this, the bit that's got me completely baffled is the header trailer. I've looked at the pictures, I've fiddled around, I've tried hooking the trailer on coming from that side, coming from that side. It looks like it's got straps. Every time I've put it on there it's fallen off. I, I honestly... <laughs> it's a minor thing. Um, but it's, it's stumped me. And again, a little bit like the Oberleitner uh, Ober, building that reaches the point that after sort of 20 minutes of messing around and trying to work out how it works you've got to concede defeat and say look I honestly I can't work it out apologies for that if you do very happy for you so the honeybee header we'll go to our headers we'll scroll across until we get to there so we start with the 7.6 meter so these go 23 slots, 25 slots, 25 slots, 26 slots, 26, 27, 29. Sizes, as we've seen, 7.6, 9.1, 11, 12.2, 13.7, which is roughly, the, that's normally the bigger sizes we get. Uh, I think there is, oh, what's that one called that we have got? That's a real monster. Mine's gone blank. 15.2 uh, and an 18.3 metre. Now, all of those say six miles an hour. So where it says in the um, details for the real honeybee airflex says you can harvest faster, harvest faster while increasing bushels, the wider you go, you're going to be harvesting faster because the bigger the header, you're getting more crop through at a time. These don't run any faster than six miles an hour as far as I can tell, but I will try with one. We'll see. So options are pretty much the same apart from, like I said, the wind system. So we've got the option on all of them for cross div uh, crop dividers. Standard, crop divider 1, crop divider 2. You can have canola knives or back to standard. That's on all of them. Cross auger at the moment, there's not one. You can have a cross auger on there if you want a cross auger. Then the Crary wind system, on this one, you've got a single flow. So it's got one pump and the air bar runs around and it, that's what it requires because it's a narrow one. Uh, then you've got height control, yes or no. 
Next one along, I think it's pretty much the same. Cross auger, crop dividers, the credit wind system single only, height control as well. Then we move up to the next one, the 11 meter. This one, right, so this one's got a single flow or a double flow on the air system. So you can have a single flow, but you can have a double flow as well if you want. Next one up, I think, only has a double. I know single flow and dual flow. Then we go up, and I'm sure this one is just... Oh, maybe not. I'm losing my mind. Maybe it's the larger two, yeah. So that one's single and dual. There have been so many mods to get my head around. Um, there we go, dual flow only. I knew it was on two of them. The two bigger ones, uh, we've got dual flow only. There's no single flow option on those at all. So, there's no colour choices or anything on those. They come honeybee black. Um, but the header trailer is down here. That's 2,700, and that's how it comes. There's no extension on that. There's no size option. Um, I'll show you what I mean. I will, I will demo it, but um, let's whiz round. A bit, of a bit of a long walk around when you get to it. So, we'll hook up. So what we need to do is unfold the header. That takes that bar out of the middle, which supports the header. It's a long header. It also brings the cutter bar out and drops sections down. So that's ready for operation. Now we do have the option here for adjusting the reel and air bar up and down and in and out. So if you haven't got the air bar, it won't necessarily show you that. But I love the, um, the animation on that, the flex and the hoses. All very nice indeed. If we go to that option, this is for the auger. So the auger just inside there, you can just about to see that. We've got movement on the auger as well. So R1 and right stick side to side and up and down. We can raise and lower that auger. Again, that's for um, for the look of it. If you've got stuff that's plugging up, you would move that auger around just to unplug and that kind of thing. Now it does also say, um, and I haven't been able to get it to do it. I think it's in the real world. It does it. Uh, where does it say? Switch from flex to rigid mode with the push of a button, allowing you to harvest your crops like canola. I th again, I think that's the real world one because I haven't found an option at all for changing the flex on it or anything like that. So if we turn it on, what we do have though, if we've gone for the header height, we've got these wheels at the back, you can see those. If I do L1, R1, it says raise tool axis, I do that pushes those wheels down and raises the header up a little bit. So it raises it just off the floor. So if you don't want to drag your header, you can raise it up just a little bit, so that's the tool height control. But it still goes at six miles an hour. It doesn't go any faster, but obviously being an absolute massive header, we're not going to have any problems at all clearing crops quickly. So raise that up. What I'm going to do is fold the header. And I'll show you what I mean about the header trailer. It's it's odd. Now the picture on the mod tub shows it facing the way it's facing. And it shows it in the middle. So I thought well, maybe you need two of them. Um, so here's the thing. You can detach this. So if I detach the rear section and drive forward out of the way because with it attached the head is too long I can't it won't fit on so like I say the picture shows it that way around so I thought once you drop it onto it it will just automatically attach won't it like all the header trailers the headers do on header trailers it should just automatically grab I've tried going forwards backwards right in the center I've tried um, all different ways of lining this up you watch it work now just to spite me um, I've tried going right the way on, I've tried coming back a little bit, I've tried coming on from this direction, from that direction. Uh, if I lower the header onto it now, and then let it go, right, and then back away. So that's on the trailer, or at least I thought it was on the trailer. So what you do with this, is that you come to this end, and you hook up to the end of the trailer, uh, the header, like... Oh, there we go. Like that. But it's not attached. As you can see, it's just it came straight off the header trailer. 
Now with this, I've gone on the options for the front of the trailer, the back of the trailer. I've been looking for attaching, detaching. That just detaches that from that. If I switch to that, I, I, I honestly, it's witchcraft and wizardry beyond my comprehension. I honestly, it's going to be something again, really simple, really straightforward and really obvious. But it's beaten me, I have to admit to defeat. So there we go. The header itself, awesome. Widths, all the options, all the stuff, absolutely fantastic. 193.06 megabytes download. It's more than some maps, in all honesty. So, that's the Honeybee Airflex series by Custom Modding. Moving on from there. We've got this. This is the John Deere 6M by Agro Tonio. 20.27 megabytes download, 15 slots on console. I've got it in a very strange configuration. There are a whole load of options on this, so I'll try to get to them. I'm really conscious of time now, so I've still got another couple of mods to look at. So, if we go up to our vehicles, this one's under medium tractors. Out on the end there, the 6M. 141 grand, it's not cheap. 170 horsepower to start off with. We've got numbers standard, 1 through to 9. We've got wheel brand, Continental, Michelin, Midas, Trelleborg, Lizard, Pats Continental. Options on these, and there are quite a few. We've got standard. I'm not going to read them all out. Um, I'll just go through them. Michelin. Midas. Trelleborg. Lizard. These are rice tyres. Back to consensus again. I think that's right. Yep. Then we've got window film, standard through to dark tint. Back to standard. You've got simple headlight. This is the top of the cab. So you've got simple headlight, double headlight. You've then got the side lights on there with simple headlights or double headlights at the front with the side um, stalks, I guess if you call them. Or back to simple again. Exhaust, we've got standard. We've got direct exhaust, short direct exhaust, back to standard. Internal props, we've got a thermos there, thermos water container. Then inside we can have a CB radio. Or we can have both or none. Antennas, left, right, both or off. Then you've got rear weights and mudguard. So rear weights on the wheels, 500, 1,000, fender on the front with 500 and 1,000, then off. Toolbox and chain, so we have a chain on the front, toolbox around the side, just underneath the cab, and you can have toolbox and chain. Then you've got a green star, you've got the attacher for the green star, preparing it for one, or the attacher and green star. You've got attachers, standard, 300 kilo, 600 kilo, uh, then the back, sorry, without rear hydraulics, so that's how it comes, you have without rear hydraulics, again with weights on the front, and then back to standard, front loader attacher, this is where we've got a load, whole load of stuff, we've got a bumper, we've got sugarcane bumper, you've got Hauer, Hauer and bumper, or no, engine setup, we've got 170 horsepower, 190 horsepower, 210, 240, that's tuned, Back to 170, and then there's a license plate option on it as well. Hop in, start it up. Horn. This is very loud, this one, so I'm going to talk up a little bit. Uh, lights. Uh, indicator stalks. If the indicator's on, as you can see. We do have the option for, if we go in cab, uh, R1 and right stick side to side. We've got movement of steering wheel up and down and in and out. If I go to the side a little bit, it's right there. So a whole load on the steering wheel. L1, right stick up and down. Oh, that does the visor. And it goes up and down a little bit, but the visor inside. And then L1, R1, left stick side to side puts the stalks away. The indicator stalks. Right stick side to side does the door. 
quite stick up and down to the rear window. So quite good to choose from there. It does sound very cool though. So we go, the John Deere 6M by Agro Tonio. Next, we've got the New Holland. This is the TL80A TL100A by Sevi Modding AM uh, Modding. 13.96 megabytes download, 17 slots on console. You'll find this. This is a fairly straightforward one. Under small tractors, out in the end there. 44 grand for the base model. We've got front weight, no or yes. We've got Trelleborg, Michelin, Continental, BKT, Mitis, back again and the Trelleborg we have got Michelin Ch uh, Continental BKT Midas back to Trelleborg again we've got beacons no central left right both at the back or back off again We've got fender, yes or no. Front loader attacher, quick. Power, no. Engine setup, 80 horsepower or 100 horsepower. And then we've got license plate option on it as well. Fairly straightforward, no colour options or anything like that on it. Hop in, start it up. We've got no doors or windows to open on this one. Beacon on the top. Lights. On. Cheap as chips, little tractor, but be warned. When you get up to speed, if you suddenly decide, oh, I need to change direction, it does that. Incredibly easily. I found as I was driving out. No, it's not going to stand back up as well as it is. Normally these things will just pop back up again. Come on. Just when I came out. Come on, you can do it. It's not going to stand back up again, is it? Nope. That's where I'm leaving it. It does fall over. Be incredibly careful. I told you the mods were kicking my butt today. Which brings me on to the last of the mods for today. And it's a cool one. It's my new squeeze. <laughs> and it's this. This is the Lizard Roadrunner Hay Squeezer by Pascal Counts. 10.1 megabytes download, 10 slots on console. Um, there are a couple of attachments that come with this. We've got the squeeze and we've got a bell spike. Um, those are two slots and one slot. 500 horsepower. With the whole load of options, it's incredibly cool. And uh, because it uses wheel loader equipment, you can put other wheel loader attachments on it as well, like forks and buckets and things like that which makes it a little bit more versatile, a bit of a yard worker and forklift and all sorts of stuff. It's pretty cool. So this you'll find under, I didn't write it down. Oh, it's under miscellaneous. There we go. 123,500 horsepower. You can have it with no decals. The blue ones, I should have gone for those, actually quite like those. Uh, design two, design three. Then you've got configuration, default without lights, default with lights. You then get modified without lights with all chrome bits on it. And then modification with lights or back to default. Uh, main colour changes the main vehicle colour, like that. Design colour changes the bottom section, like that. Rim colour, as you can imagine, does the rims. But if we've gone for that one... It also gives you the option for changing that design colour, so you can change the colour of the stripe as well. No, we want to know with... There you go, that's not the brightest one, is it really? 
there we go so you can change that as well that's only if you go for design three it gives you that extra option to change those colors on there and you've got license plate option on there and i went for squeezer because it is that's what it does if we go down to tools and we go to our wheel loader attachments it will take any of the wheel loader attachments and modded ones and stuff like that but out on the end there we've got the hay squeezer bail clamp for 4300 and the hay squeezer bail fork options on these we can change the main color on that one on this one we can change the main color and the fork color as well like so so let's hop in Start it up. That's awesome. Um, beacons. Now we do have under L1 and R1 and right stick side to side. We can open both sliding doors. It turns the interior light on as well. So from inside. Nice. We can drive it that way wherever we're going to do what we're doing to get from place to place it'll go up to 51 miles an hour because it's got a 500 horsepower engine it's basically a lorry which is really cool so i can get from place to place is pretty cool it doesn't have a rear trailer hitch but i don't just don't think there's any wheel loader attachments that do have any any bits and bobs like that uh lights very cool now we can change driving direction which puts us there which puts us in our mode for using the actual attachments. The clamp, for example. Now, the clamp, we can go up and down, in and out. The arms do that anyway. Um, but the clamp itself, we can go out, but we can also go side to side. So if we're not lined up quite properly, we can move the whole assembly side to side and over and out. What I will say, considering this is designed for a bail grab, it... it What's the best way of putting this? It's not a positive grab. Um, in that, if I bring it down to here, it's good that you can raise it and lower it so you can take off just the top section, the single section, two sections, three sections, or pick up a whole stack, which is great. But what I found was, when I get to there, and I'm where I need to be, and I want to bring that barrel grab in to clamp, it keeps going into the barrel. So at that point, it's saying I've got 16,000 litres. That's saying 8,000, that's 16, but the bail clamp just keeps going. It closes right in. I thought it would be a more positive grab on the outside of the bales. So when I get to the point now where it's a 16... Is it going to do it? It's decided not. There we go, 16,000. We can raise and lower it. There's no way of strapping them down or anything like that. You just have to be incredibly careful. Um... And then we can move our bells around, which is fine. So like I say, I, I thought it would really clamp around the outside of them. But I guess it's not doing that so it doesn't cause bales to catapult around maps and things like that. Which does happen. We've all been there. But I have to say, I really do like it. Again, it's, I've always said it and I say it all the time, it's something different. You know, it's not dropping them, but it's, you know, I, I just thought it might be a little bit more of a, a positive. That's just me. Uh, so what I'll do is open it out. We'll attach to the other one. It's awesome. It, like I say, it's just so different to anything we've got. And anything we've had. Interior views, not, with the forks there, it's not the best visibility, but... You can still do your thing. I'm going to be terrible at this, I know I am, but... Oh, I think we've just gone over the way things at the back of it. Now that didn't seem to go quite well. I wasn't lined up at all. See what I mean? Interior, inside, first person. Shocking. That, for me, is more positive. I mean, I love the grab, I love the squeeze thing, I think it's a brilliant idea. Actually, you know what I didn't try? I'm going to try it very quickly. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm very, very conscious of... Um, ...of time, but... Let's detach that. Can I? 
So we're going 27 miles now, that, that direction, so in reverse technically. It will. It can't go narrow enough. That's as narrow as it goes, and it's too uh, too wide for that. Okay, well, it's worth a try. Maybe if you do two together, it's sort of thing that people are going to fill around with, aren't they? They're going to find all sorts of things to pick up with that grab. And then if you just get a regular wheel loader attacher, whatever it might be, or attachment, like forks or buckets or anything like that, you can still operate those on it as well. It's got a really nice reach on it, too. Very cool! If you're in a hurry to get where you're going, off you rocket! I think the only thing that would that would add to it, and I, I don't suppose it's a thing in the real world, is having a little trailer hitch on the back of that as well, so you could move trailers around and load bales on that kind of stuff. That back on. But I know it's not designed for that. Um, but there you go! That's the Lizard Roadrunner Hay Squeezer by Pascal Kautz. That's it for the mods for today. Apologies for the couple of hiccups and the bits I couldn't work out. It's just the way it is. Um, if you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh.